man, you go crazy. Can you tell us how has your mindset evolved over the years in terms of your approach to addressing educational and mental health disparities faced by African-American children? How has it evolved? That's a great question. I'm sure it has. I probably can't point to specifically how, except to say that what I knew to be true 20 years ago, Still true. I really know to be true now. You, you follow? Mm -hmm. Like, I knew we needed our own schools for our children. But when Barack Obama came and dropped off that LGBTQ bomb in a public school, I said, we really need our own schools now. And you know what's so sad about that? With all of the brainwash going on in the schools right now, with all the brainwash, black people are still not in a rush to open up their own schools for their children. I'm the only person I know of in the country, in the country who's building an independent school without no white money, no government funding, no white corporate handouts in a real school building, not a church front, not a basement, not a storefront that's going to educate black children into who they are without no participation from the oppressor. I don't see nobody else doing it. People talk a lot about LeBron James school. LeBron James don't have no damn school. I keep telling Charlemagne this every time I'm on the breakfast club. They keep bringing up uh, LeBron. He don't have a school. That's a public school with his name on it. And speaking of LeBron James school, did you see what happened a couple months ago? They got called out because for the past two or three years, not a single eighth grader in the school, I believe it was, passed the Ohio State math assessment. Now, mind you, LeBron pumping millions in here. You feel me? He pumped. So they can't use the excuse. We ain't got enough money. Y'all get more money than the most schools. Not a single black boy passed the eighth grade math test at the LeBron James public school. What does that tell you? It tells you that paying white women more money to teach black kids ain't going to work. Because if they don't care about your damn children, it don't matter how much money you pay them, they still not going to learn. Why am I bringing this up? Because the white, late, the white teacher unions of America is constantly saying, if you want us to do a better job teaching black kids, pay our teachers more money. Well, look at the LeBron James school. They getting more money, still ain't getting educated. Black children can only be taught by black people. It is unfair to ask a white woman to educate a black child. You know why? Because to ask a white woman to educate your black child, do you know what you're asking her to do? You're asking her to put my child in a position to take a job from your child. You're asking her to put my child in position to take food out of her child's mouth. What person is going to empower another group to take power from their own group? It is an absolute contradiction to have white women teaching black children. But you know why they do it? Because number one, black people don't love themselves enough to build their own schools. And number two, white people know that as long as white women are in charge of black education, there'll never be an intellectual revolution. So what motivates and drives you to continue to advocate for African-American children? Education? My ancestors. Right before I came here today, I went to the Ida B. Wells gravesite. I'm going to have to go back because I had another interview I had to hop on, so I didn't get enough time. But everywhere I go, every city, man, I go pour some gin at the ancestors' graves. Because as someone who practices traditional African spirituality, we believe our ancestors are always with us. They are the angels. OK, our ancestors are our angels. So I'm always calling on them because I don't really have nobody walking this earth who I can look to as a role model. The ones who I think could be world role models, they don't do anything. And the ones who are actually out there prominent amongst the people, they're not really sincere. They're just money grabbers. So for me, I got to look back to the ancestors. So when I'm in Africa. I'm at Shaka Zulu gravesite. You understand? I'm 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 at a uh, I'm at a Nanam the Ezekiel Way gravesite. I was in Jamaica this past spring. I'm at Garvey gravesite. I'm at the Bob Marley House. I'm always looking for inspiration from the ancestors because I judge myself by their standard. Because there's no standard that exists right now for me to judge myself by. So I don't want to let them down because in my tradition that I practice, we come into this world with a purpose. Every one of us got a purpose for being here. You got to find it and you got to fulfill it. I was lucky enough to know what my purpose was in the fourth grade. I decided I wanted to be a psychologist in the third grade. I came into black consciousness of public speaking in the fourth and fifth grade. I found out I was related to Frederick Douglass in the sixth grade. So by the time I left elementary school, I knew I would be a freedom fighter for my people. So even with all the college degrees and all of that, it never took me. I know why I'm here, and that's to fight for the liberation of black people. I have no confusion about my being. So I could put up with the slander. I could put up with the sabotage. I could put up with the white racism. I could put up with all the setbacks with the FDMG Academy because I know this is why I was born. I know my purpose. And when you know who you are and what you are here to do, nobody can deter you from that. Y'all yeah, definitely gonna ask, like, how do you handle criticism and pushback regarding to your ideas and work? Well, it's all indirect criticism and slander. There's never been a scholar to challenge me, black or white, publicly. They can't. There's not a black scholar who could go around with me 
in anything serious as it pertains to the liberation of black people, nobody on the planet can stand up, up against me. None of them. They think they can. They can't. That's why they don't come for me, because they know better. They'll get that Garvey grenade. But the thing is, the support is 50 times stronger than the hate. Mm -hmm. So if you go on YouTube, you see a million hate videos, right? This YouTube struggle stream or this YouTube struggle stream. So it looks like Dr. Umar got all these detractors. But if I had all them detractors, how did we raise all the money and buy them schools? How did we raise all the money and renovate them schools? If I got all them detractors, why am I the most requested black scholar in the world? Not America, the planet for 13 years. It's never been done before. I'm the first ever. You see that? So if I had all this hate, how am I where I am? You see what I'm saying? The problem is the hate gets all the attention. The love don't. You know why? Because my supporters are mature people. They don't have time for the bullshit. You see that? The haters are immature people. They got time for the bullshit. My supporters don't get involved in that. People say, what you do with the school money? People want to know. People like who? Because all my supporters, they talk to me direct. My number public. I talk to my supporters all day long. They email me. They inbox me. So the people who rock with me, they good. It's the haters who got a million and one questions because they don't want to see you succeed. And it's a shame because I think we're at a point right now in our sojourn in America as black men where some of us would rather see another brother fail than thrive, even if what he's working for is for the greater good of the community. I'm seeing people destroy on the Internet, separate from myself. They can't destroy me. I'm on a mission from God. But I'm seeing other people being destroyed on the Internet with the scantiest of proof. Why y'all tearing this brother down? He got a family to feed. He got a career. Y'all keep doing this. They're going to fire him because it's not a good look, even though the information is false. We don't care. You got a whole community of black men on YouTube who are so dissatisfied with their life, they've dedicated to destroying the lives of other black men, and it's a shame. That's a fact. DJ, you go crazy.